Crucifixion. By many infallible, unmistakable proofs, being sin, seen by them during 40 days and speaking to them the, the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He appeared to over 500 people, wasn't just the 12 apostles, whatever, you know, for, um, for a little over a month. He wasn't hiding out, okay? Um, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus asked the disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? He said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're uh, uh, Isaiah or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said, who do you say that I am? Now, this is an important question. Everybody in this room has to answer this question. Who is Jesus to you? Okay. Who do you say that? Not, he first asked, what are, what's everybody else saying? Well, some say you're this, some say you're that. Then he goes, well, you guys, who am I to you? And Peter had the right answer. Peter says, you are the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus says to him, he says, blessed are, are thou, or blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. That's important, y'all. I am flesh and blood, okay? This is a body has blood pumping through it. We could cut it and see, but just take my word if there's blood in here. <laughs> flesh and blood, I'm a person. I want to tell you something. I really can't reveal this to you. I can, I'm going to give it my best shot, but it says, what did it say? He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Well, who revealed to Peter that Jesus was the Christ? He answers it in the same question, in the same verse. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to, the, to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. God Almighty revealed to me that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm a, and I wrote, tell your story. That's what he told me to do this morning. He told me to tell you my story. Okay, I'm going to tell you my story. You all have a story. Some of y'all, you know, whether you know Jesus personally or not, you're in a good place to, to, to inter, be introduced to him today because he's in the house. I mean, y'all feel that presence. What is that? Some kind of air freshener y'all have here or something? What is that? That's the presence of God. In his presence is fullness of joy. There's peace in his presence. Okay? Well, what's my story? June 15th, 1973, my notes say, Whippoorwill Road, okay? I met Jesus the Savior. I want to tell you that there's, Jesus has lots of different um, uh, manifestations. He's, 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 you know, he'll be anything you want him to be. If you're lonely right now and you're going through a time in your life where you really could use a friend, the Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He'll be a friend to you. If you're battling sickness, whatever, he's a healer. If you're like, like that song we were singing about, if you need a Savior, that's what I suggest. You first meet him as a Savior. Okay, on June 15, 1973, you know, Paul had his Damascus Road experience. I had my Whippoorwill Road experience. I was camping out with some friends on Whippoorwill Road, and about 2 o'clock in the morning I went off and got by myself and was just sitting there, and the Lord, the Bible says, no man comes to the Father except he be drawn by the Spirit. I'm sitting under this tree, and all of a sudden, I start thinking. Some of you are going, I, I, if Jesus would reveal himself to me, I would probably go for it. He's revealed himself more than you realize. You probably just didn't know it was him. The Bible says he stands at the door and knocks. If any man will hear that voice and open the door, I'll come in. Do you think Jesus just started knocking? Like he's, FYI, some of y'all are going to get saved today. He told me that this morning. So I'm looking forward. This is your birthday. You're going to get born again on Easter. Carla and Scott got born again four years ago on Easter. They were sitting in the balcony. I'll never forget this. I gave an altar call, and, and their youngest son stood up, and then the, the teenage guys, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> you ain't going to be done by your little, undone by your little brother. And next thing you know, you're Scott and Carla standing up, all four of them standing up there, and they gave their heart to Jesus. Now, if you would ask Carla or Scott today, best decision they ever made. Right now, they're on a cruise ship uh, going to the, the Caribbean. Tell me the Lord ain't good. <laughs> we were supposed to go with them, but I decided to come here instead and talk to you guys. <laughs> I know, somebody's got to die so others live, but... <laughs> At least I dressed the part. 
So I'm out there and I'm sitting under this pine tree and I, you know, the Bible says that the prodigal, prodigal son, it says when he came to himself, he said. So we got to get to that place in our life where we quit lying to ourselves and quit telling ourselves everything's okay when it's not. That moment, see, I didn't realize this was the Lord, but that's who it was. You ever have the, the Bible says he'll put the mirror of his word. You ever notice when sometimes in your life where there's a, it's like you get confronted with you? You can tell, you can fool your friends, you can fool other people, and they can think you have, have it all together and stuff, but, you know, you live with you 24-7. And that night, about 2 o'clock in the morning, the mirror of the word, his presence just started speaking to me. And just I started seeing myself for who I really was. I quit lying to myself. I quit telling myself I have it together when I didn't. You know, I was hurting the very people I love the most, I was hurting the most. And I began to think about how I'd been lying to my dad, who had done nothing but be a friend to me all my life, co-signed for my car, helped me fix my car when I blew the engine up, and all these, you know, I was just having these little, you think they're called, they think it's deja vu, you think you're, I'm just reminiscing, thinking, well, none of us like to reminisce on our failures. <laughs> I think I'll sit around and just see how bad I suck, see, <laughs> That's not what we do, okay? If you, if you do that, you need Jesus, okay? If you do that as an act of your will. But see, most of us lie to ourselves. We tell ourselves we're okay when we're not. We, tell us, we, tell, we're, we, th we think like, we're gonna, it's going to get better. I'm going to do better. I'm going to read more self-help books. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get better. But see, that night I just came to the end of myself and said, you know what, Mike, you're a mess. And I remember without an altar call, without a preacher, without somebody, without a Billy Graham or a choir, just as I am, but, you know, without all that, under a pine, pine tree, minding my own business, the Holy Spirit just said, come home. And I'm going to tell you something, I had an encounter with the Lord. I just dropped my head and said, Jesus, if you can take my life and make it worth living, from this day forward, I'm trucking for you. That was my sinner's prayer. Well, that don't even sound scriptural. I, you didn't, there was no King James in there. Uh, you didn't confess all your sins. I would still be there confessing my sins. Aren't you glad you don't have to come up with all of them? You just have to say, I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. And I will tell you something. A peace came inside me that I, have to this day, still there. I got born again. My call died June 15, 1973, my old man, and a new man came forth. The Spirit of God came in me, and I got born again. Jesus said you must be born again. That's what happens when God's Spirit comes in you. You are born again, okay? I went back to my friends. They were sitting around the campfire about a couple hundred yards away. I went back, and I told my friend, I said, hey, guys, I've been talking to God. I said, uh, I'm, they were like, dude, pretty high, huh? <laughs> That's what they were doing. I was like, no, seriously. I said, uh, I gave my heart to Jesus. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow him from now on. And I meant it. And I had no idea what that even meant. But I knew I got saved. I went home the next day and told my dad. I said, Dad, I gave my heart to Jesus last night. And he, uh, of course, he'd been praying for me for years. He was all real happy. And, um, okay. So in June, I'm just giving you some times and dates. In June 15, 1973, do you realize this coming June 15th, it'll be 45 years? I'm going to celebrate. I got a birthday coming up Tuesday, in case you didn't know. Now you do. <laughs> Ask Brent, she's got a list. Um, but I'll be 63. But I got saved when I was 18. And I've enjoyed this journey. Oh, my goodness. What? If, I'm going to tell you something. If you're fellowship and boredom, you need to get right with God. Because if you're, when, you have, when you're right with God, your life will not be boring. My life was, that was one of the reasons I came to Jesus. My life was boring. You know, I don't know why it takes people decades to get off drugs and alcohol. Five years, pretty much, it's like, I ain't doing this the rest of my life. This is not even fun anymore. Amen? Hallelujah. I do realize why it takes some people a lot longer, because they're numbing pain. But, um, so I met Jesus, the Savior. June 15, 1973. Uh, June 12th, excuse me, July 12th, 
1973. That's like a month later. Yeah. I, I went to this church where my dad was going, and uh, they were having revival. We were singing about it today. And uh, he'd been asking me all week to go. And uh, this one Friday night, a friend of mine, Paul Thompson, and I, we went to, uh, we thought we'd go and check it out. Now, you got to remember, this isn't, this isn't the 70s. I have hair down to here. My friend had a big old beard and hair down to here. If you look like that in the 70s, you look like you need to get saved. <laughs> Maybe not in California, but in Mississippi, you, you walk in, people go, there he is, <laughs> fresh meat. You, know, just, you just look like something needs to get saved. Well, we went to church that night, and what happened that night, I met Jesus the baptizer. What do you mean the baptizer? Did you get wet? No. John the Baptist said, Truly I baptize you with water unto repentance, but there, there comes one after me, whose shoes I'm not even worthy to unlatch. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Who's the baptizer? Jesus. I've been saved a month. How many of you I'm still feeling pretty good? Oh, yeah. And I go to the church, and the, this guy's preaching about the Holy Spirit, and he, he's a, I knew I was saved. Now, my friend Paul Thompson wasn't. He, was, um, he had gotten saved when the Jesus movement hit town. It was cool to be a Jesus freak. We, we worked hard to convert him back to our ways, and, then, and he did. But um, when I gave my heart to Jesus, I called Paul and said, Hey, I'm, I'm, so, I'm trucking for Jesus now. He said, Yeah, I'm not there right now, but... I, I want to get back. So I invited him to church that night with me. Now, I'm born again. I love Jesus. I've been saved a month. Paul goes to church with me that night. He is, he's not saved. And this guy's preaching about this powerful gift that God wants to give you that will give you power. Who wants power? Me and Matt. Y'all, y'all should hit the coffee bar before you get here. Right? It's open early for a reason. So, um, I remember this guy was preaching about, and this guy was, he was, he was, I, back then I thought he was old. He was like 40, you know, and he's like, he's all fired up, and it's like, dude, I know I'm saved, but this guy's got something I don't have. And I listened to him, and he was saying, if you want the power of God, you want the Holy Ghost, come on down. It's like, okay, and I went forward, and I saw my friend Paul get up, and I'm thinking, Phew, boy, you're going to be embarrassed. <laughs> you're not even right with God, but, um. You've heard the story, a lot of y'all. We went forward, we got prayed for, and we both got filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you know you got filled with the Holy Spirit? I thought you were saved. Well, I was forgiven of my sins. I received Jesus. That's one benefit. Amen? How many of those levels of God? How many when you go to, there's, when you buy a car, there's options? You can get a window, or you can get a window. You can get steering, or you can get steering. One's just one, one, the cheaper method, you're going to have to put more of your energy in it to make it work. I like to use the power method because it's, it's more about, I like power steering. I like power brakes. I like power windows because some, something else does the work. I want to tell you something, as Christians, you should want a power walk with God because something else will do the work. Amen? You'll have a, an encounter with God. You can do it in your own strength, and you can try, 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 or you can do it in God's strength, which is so much easier. And it's more effective, and it freaks people out better. <laughs> Don't you want to freak people out? Yeah, I was freaked out by this guy preaching, and I'm thinking, dude, he has... See, I knew he had something I didn't have. Now, I knew I was saved. I had experienced the peace and the forgiveness of God, but it's like, this guy's got something I ain't got. See... One thing about when you come to Jesus, you quit, hopefully you quit lying to yourself. One thing I love about Jesus, he's not a respecter of persons. That means he don't have no favorites. What he'll do for one, he'll do for anybody. Amen? So I knew that, I knew that this guy was saying it's a gift, so God loves to give his kids gifts. So I went down there, and the guy prayed for me, and I received the Holy Spirit. How do you know I received? Well, I started speaking in tongues. Oh, we got visitors. Don't go there. Oh, that freaks them out. I'm trying to freak you out. I'm trying to. I want you to realize there's more to being a Christian than just saying some little prayer to church and going home and reading your Bibles and having some magnets on your refrigerator that have Bible verses on it and you try to be good. It's more than trying to be good. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in our mortal bodies. That's pretty heavy duty. Well, I hope when I die I go to heaven. Hmm. 
I, I, I know when I die I'm going to heaven. And not only do I know it, I'm bringing a bunch of people with me. Man, my son called me last week and said, hey, Dad, there's a new record in the Hall House. See, we've got a legacy going on here. Don't you want to leave a legacy? See, Luke holds the record of being the youngest, getting filled with the Holy Ghost. He got filled when he was four. Can you be four years old and get filled with the Holy Ghost? Some of you go, they already speak in tongues at four. They haven't learned English yet. No. He was four years old and he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Sean was like five when he got filled. I mean, my kids got filled at a young age. If you know Jesus, you can get every one of his gifts. The only thing that's required to be, receive the Holy Spirit is you must be born again. But my son Dan called me the other day and said, Dad, guess what? He said, old Justice was over there praying the other day, and I went over and listened to him. Man, he was just getting it. He was praying in tongues. He's two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Hallelujah. He say, wow. Well, I don't know if I believe that. You don't have to. Only his dad and me and justice is the only one I cared about. Amen? It's real. See, because his parents are really into praying. Their whole ministry is a lot about praying and stuff. They have prayer meetings all the time. It's whatever, you know what, your children are going to, they're going to imitate whatever you're into. If you're really into praying, your kids will be prayer warriors at a young age. If you're really into worship, if you love to worship God, you'll have worship music on in your house throughout the week and stuff. And your kids will be walking around singing the songs of God. They'll be singing that what we're singing this morning. You're over. They'll be back there, whatever. Well, um, they, they, when you see your parents praying and seeking God all the time, that becomes you're going to, part of what you're going to be trying to do. And I'm going to tell you something. His, his five-year-old... Um, Annabelle, my memory's on the second row. <laughs> Annabelle, she had a vision here recently and saw Jesus. Oh, that's just freaky. Now, I don't know if I believe in that. I had a, I'm going to get to my vision. I've seen him. How many of y'all want to see Jesus? Some of y'all going, not till the judgment. <laughs> I want to see him, but I want to see him every day if I could. I was listening to Rick Jordan the other day, and he just was up in heaven for several days and had some encounters with the Lord. He's writing a new book. Hey, I like to, t I like to hear from people that actually go to these places and not just sit here with a telescope going, I don't know, we'll find out one day. You can go as deep in God as you want to go. Oh, that's what I'm trying to get you to see today. This being a Christian thing is a blast. So... A month after I got saved, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And boy, howdy, that changed things. The power of God is amazing. What happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, um, so I met Jesus, a baptizer. Um, in probably about in 2074, I met Jesus, the healer. What did I say? Just seeing if you're paying attention. <laughs> Okay, 1974, a year later, I'm out in the woods. I had, I, my first year as a Christian, I spent a lot of time in the woods just pre, re, reading my Bible and praying and stuff. Why? Because a lot of my friends didn't want to hang out with me because I didn't do, want to do the things they wanted to do. But you know what, Jesus is with, If you're thinking, I, I don't want to give up this or that, it's like, you're not ready. If you don't see the value of this, he came and took your place. Amen? So we could love, I heard a song this morning that says, he, he talked about so we could learn to love like he does. I want to tell you something. I've been walking with him for 45 years, and I, my goal is to love like Jesus. I don't want to be known for the guy that walks on water and glows in the dark. I can, but that's not the big deal. <laughs> I want to be known for the guy that loves like Jesus. I mean, I want to love like Jesus. Oh, amen. So I'm out in the woods one night, and I'm reading my Bible, my living, new, my living Bible, and I get to this verse in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It says, by whose stripes you were healed. Now, I'm no Greek scholar, and I didn't even go to Bible school. But I got to the word were healed, and I realized that's past tense. And now, for the, the year I got, became a Christian, I was having so much trouble with my stomach because I had all the years I was free hanging out. You know, When you're free with the devil, how many of those are priced to it? I had ulcers. I had three of them, the size of quarters on my stomach. Now, if you know anything about ulcers, I remember when my doctor was checking me out, and he says, 
what is, he said, what are you worried about? He said, you've got ulcers, three of them, the size of quarters in your stomach. He said, you've got an old man's stomach and you're 17. When you're free, there's a price to it. See, you're not free if you're still running with the devil. And when I say running with the devil, that don't mean you're, you're out doing evil and bad things. Most people are trying to be good, trying to do the right thing and stuff. But either you know Jesus or you don't. Amen? Jesus said you're either, you're, your father's either the devil or it's God. There's no in-between. I was a good per- trying to be a good person, but I was doing a lot of things that was messing me up. So I, remember I, read, I read this verse and I thought, we're healed. That's, that's different. And I remember, I, I, love that, I love that Jesus will work with you at whatever level you are and your understanding. So I just said that night, I said, Lord, it says here that by your stripes we were healed. So that's past tense. So if you'd, if you'd heal these ulcers, I'd sure like to eat some real food again. Now, I've been eating, if you're a vegetarian, no, no offense, okay? If you want to be a vegetarian, that's your, that's your prerogative. But I like meat. The Bible says you, you can eat meat for those who know the truth. Okay, um, I like chocolate. Who don't? It's not just for breakfast anymore. I mean, it's it's you can have it all the time. There were, you know, I, I like soda back in those days. I was I was a lot of stuff I couldn't eat because it wasn't worth the pain. If you if you know anybody has ulcers, you eat chocolate, you're hurting. If you drink a soda, Mount St. Helen blows up and. You're living on Maylocks. At 17, that's in Tums. You, I never went out of the house without a pack of Tums in my pocket to neutralize the fun. Well, I want to tell you something. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So I'm out there in the woods. and I, Now, what happens? You were a vegetarian for a year? Yeah. No, I, the good thing is I love vegetables. But I used to go to the burger, burger joints, and I'd say, I'd like a this place called Burger Chef, and, and I'd go there, I'd say, I'd like a, a, a big chef, no meat. That freaks people out. What? <laughs> In Mississippi, they say, what? Not, no mayo? No, no meat. Basically, it's lettuce and tomato and pickles and whatever sauce they put on there, no meat. When you get a burger with no meat, that freaks people out. But I, you know, basically a veggie burger. And um, so I was eating those things, and bananas, like on hot dog buns and stuff like that, you know. Um, I remember one time my stepmom got mad at me because I wasted a bun, and they were all having hot dogs, and I took a banana and peeled it and took a bun and put it on there and put some peanut butter or mayonnaise on it. She's like, those are for hot dogs. I said, looks kind of like a hot dog. (laughs) Oh, man. She had rules and regulations, you know. Anyway. So I, I go, I prayed that night out in the woods and said, Jesus, if you'd, would you heal my ulcer? That would be so cool if you'd do that. Now, did, you, did the heavens open up and you see angels? Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, no, I just prayed a simple prayer. And then I went and got in my car and I drove to an all night. It was a uh, Sambo's back then. It's Denny's now. And I ordered a chili size and a Coke. Something said, better get some milk or something. You're going <laughs> to... And I ate it, and nothing happened. Well, I didn't, ex- I didn't think something would happen, because I believed that Jesus was going to heal me, and he did. Well, how do you know? Well, I went to the doctor the next day, or a week later, and had some more x-rays done, and the doctor's doing this. I don't know what happened to you. I have, this is your x-ray before. You can see the ulcers. This is the new x-ray. He said, not only they're not there... It's like you got a new stomach. So I have, remember we're talking about with many infallible proofs. I'm telling you, I know Jesus rose from the dead. I'm going to tell you story after story how I know he rose from the dead because he's done this for me. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. And And I'm a baby Christian. I've only been saved like for a year. And I'm having all these crazy encounters with the Lord. It's like, this is fun. So, uh, you know, I'm eating chocolate again, having soda, going to Burger Chef. Double patties. <laughs> having a good time. Oh, praise God. So I met Jesus, the healer. See, Jesus is more than just your Savior. He's the guy who wants to forgive your sin. He wants to heal your body. 
He wants to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and give you power. Well, let's see, in, um, in June... Um, in June of 1974, remember I got saved in June of 73, so a year later, I led the first, my first person to the Lord. His name was John Cannon. I led this guy to the Lord. Within three months, by August, the same, same summer, there was like 150 kids coming out to my house to hear about Jesus. Oh, you were in the ministry. I wasn't planning to. Now, if I would have went to a career counselor thing in, in, in my senior year, being in the ministry wasn't even on the list. How many of y'all are doing things right now that you didn't think that you'd be doing? Isn't God good? I love it when he, he gets you best suited for what you are, for who you are. He made you to be a certain thing a certain way. Some of your jobs don't, aren't working right now probably because you're in the wrong job. Well, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm, I'm going what pays the most. Well, is that really what we're down here for, to see who makes the most money? How much money did Mother Teresa make? I think she was like, like $80 an hour. No. How about this? So the lepers in Calcutta weren't paying her big bucks? No, they didn't have any money, folks. It's not what pays you the most money. It's, not, it's really what, it's, it's what you love to do. You ever had a nurse that's called to be a nurse and then one that's not? I had a motorcycle wreck one time as a, a young Christian. I didn't want to take pain medicine because I didn't want them to think that I was you know, trying to get drugs. I'm, you know, pain medicine is okay when you're in pain. That's what it's for. You know, but I'm, I'm a young Christian. I got long hair. I didn't want people to think, you know, oh, he's, in, he's, just, he's just doing drugs. He just wants drugs. So I have a dislocated shoulder. My back's all messed up. My arm's broke. Oh, I'm in a mess, and I wouldn't push the button. And one time I couldn't take it, and I just pushed the button, and the nurse came in there. I said, man, I'm really hurting. She says, well, have you done anything for pain? Ah, I didn't want you guys to think I'm a drug addict. <laughs> She's like, sir, it's for pain. <laughs> it's to make sure you don't hurt. You see, pain medicine for pain is okay. It's when you're not in pain physically, and you're doing it for, you're medicating emotional pain and stuff, then you need to find a better way. Amen? So, anyways, um, so I lead 150 people to the Lord that summer. Now I'm sharing Jesus with people. I met, you know, you know Jesus is the evangelist. He's, he's all five of the fivefold. In the book of Ephesians, it says that God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. Those are five different types of ministers that minister the gospel. And um, he's all of those guys. Well, I met Jesus the evangelist. Guess what? I started evangelizing. Led thousands of kids to the Lord for about 10 years. All right? This is an adventure, y'all. I'm on an adventure. He's proving the resurrection. You know what happens every time somebody gets saved? You ever lead somebody to Jesus? You get saved all over again. Because the miracle of what, what you experienced when you got born again and you see that person give their heart to Jesus and the change that comes in their life, it's like you're seeing it over and over again. Amen? Hallelujah. So needless to say, my life's getting pretty exciting. All these kids coming out every week, and I did this for years. Um, and then 1975, I'm sitting at church one time, and I just asked Jesus, I said, Jesus, I refuse to leave here tonight till you bless me. I want to know your love. You know, God don't care if you get a little pushy in your prayers, especially when, when you're asking to know him. And I went down to the altar and tried to pray a little bit and tried to think about Jesus on the cross and stuff that would make you cry. Hey, I'm just being honest, people. You, you ever have, oh, they're pulling those hairs. Oh, come on, Jesus. <laughs> just tried to, tried to work it up. None of y'all have ever done that. I know you're all super spiritual. I just got up this morning and said, Easter, <laughs> clothes came on me. Oh, God bless you. Um... So I'm down there praying, nothing's happening. I go back and I sit in my seat, and I, t and I tell the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm not leaving tonight till I have an encounter with you. He likes it when you get pushy like that because he wants to reveal himself to you. And I'll tell you something, I, I sat there, and I felt like fingers just closed my eyes. And I want to tell you something. I know what it means in the Scripture. It says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I was taken up. I was in this Pentecostal church, and if you've ever been in a Pentecostal church, they're kind of noisy. 
if you don't hear anything, either you died or you've been taken up in the spirit. And I was, all of a sudden, I didn't hear anything. And this cloud kind of, whoosh, next thing I know, I'm standing on the street and I see this guy carrying a cross coming my way. And I knew, I saw the passion of Christ 30 years before it came out. And it wasn't an actor acting it out, it was Jesus. I remember I just asked the Lord, show me who you are. Show me your love. And I walked with Jesus, and I'm telling you, folks, I saw it like I was there. It wasn't like walking a vision or watching a movie screen. I could smell the, the dirt. I could smell the blood. And I walked with Jesus as people spat on him and threw dirt and rocks at him, and he'd, he'd take two or three steps and fall down, two or three steps and fall down. I'm telling you, it was all I could do was weep. And all my friends were kind of freaked out because I'm sitting there just... <laughs> just crying this thing lasted about a half hour when i get up i couldn't even talk to people because i was so freaked out and i walked with jesus all the way part of the way to he got where he couldn't even carry it and they just drug him people some guy grabbed him by the arm and drug him through the dirt this is the this is god dragging through the dirt they took him up on the hill and they put the nails in the hands of his feet and they crucified him they raised him up and he hung there and even when he's hanging on the cross, his mom's at the foot of the cross crying and Mary Magdalene and John. And he says to, his, to John, he says, to Mary, he says, woman, behold your son. In other words, he's saying, John, take care of mom. While he's dying in an excruciating pain, he's still ministering to people. Man. And then the one thief says, hey, if you're the son of God, do something. And then they... And this other guy says, we deserve this. He's done nothing wrong. He says, remember me, Jesus, when you come in your kingdom. Jesus said, this day you'll be with me. He's still in excruciating pain, people. His hands were quivering, but he, he, he managed to minister to the, even when people are making a draw on him, he's still ministering to people. And I'm watching this, I'm just standing, standing at the foot of the cross watching all this. And it was mind-blowing. The next thing I know, I see that I see that it's the middle of the day, and it, the whole fly, the whole sky gets dark. I mean, like nighttime, just. Vroom. And then Jesus screams out, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" See, at that point, all my sin and yours, and mankind's, God took all our sin and placed it on His Son as a sacrifice. He died with with mine and your sin in His body. At that point, God couldn't look at Jesus because God's holy. He won't look at sin. So at that point, he turns his back. Now Jesus is all alone on the cross. And that's when he screams out. He's been in excruciating pain for a while, folks. Still ministering to people. But when his fellowship with God was cut off. For you that don't have fellowship with God, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if God was to take his spirit out of me, I would drop to my knees and start bawling. Because I would feel like the biggest part of me left. See, Jesus completes us. Forget Barry, the Jerry Maguire, you complete me. You had me at hello. Forget that. That's not even close. Jesus really completes us because he's what, we were created to have fellowship with God. And if you're not fellowship in God, I mean true fellowship, not, not head fellowship. Some of y'all are trying to work it up through here. It's not through here. It's through here. If it's not coming... See, I woke up this morning, and he was talking to me. I'm sitting in my little chair in my room, and I'm drinking my coffee, and he's just, and I'm listening to this song, and I'm weeping. Brim was in the kitchen working on, make, mixing up her thing for the picnic, and I'm just weeping as the Lord's just ministering to me. See, he's here. All, he's all, I don't go to church to encounter him. I encounter him all the time. He said, when I come in, my spirit comes inside you, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I will tell you something, I'm aware that he's with me all the time. Isn't, isn't that how you want to live? Yeah. So, in this vision, I see him die, he, he just gives up the ghost and he dies, and whoosh, next thing I know, that goes away. And I see Jesus walking down the street, and he sits on this little, this little boulder, little rock, and some kids come up and he starts tickling them. Then he falls on the ground and starts wrestling with them. You know, I asked God to show me his love. I want to tell you something. Some of y'all say, Brother Mike, you don't preach Jesus like everybody else does. I like your version of Jesus. I want to tell you why. That's how I saw him. 
You know, if, if God reveals himself a certain way to you, that's how you're going to reveal that to other people. I wanted to see who Jesus really is. He loves kids. He tickles people. He laughs. And the disciples came out and tried to get rid of him. And Jesus said, no, 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 I love kids. See, Jesus loves kids. And I saw him walking, and he got up and started walking down the street, and this blind guy comes up. How do you know he's blind? Because he didn't have any, he just had whites in his eyes. And Jesus walked up to him, had some guy hold, some guy was walking with him, and kind of leading him. And Jesus walked up to him and just stopped, and he touched the guy like this, and I saw little dots turn into pupils. He created eyeball, the part that was missing in the eyes. And the guy, this old guy, looks at us, he was old. He looked at his hands for the first time in his life because he was born with just white, milky eyes. He didn't have pupils, people. He'd been blind all his life. He looks at his hand for the first time, looks at Jesus, tears streaming down. They didn't say a word. They didn't high-five, pound it. They didn't do none of that. He didn't say, I'm Jesus, the Messiah. You know, I love this about Jesus. He's, not, he's so secure, he don't need all our accolade. Because, you know, if we don't praise him, he says, don't worry, the rocks and trees will. The angels in heaven, boom, they're always praising and shouting. The only thing you can really give God is worship. He has everything else. So that's why worship's such a big deal. He loves it when you sing and, and, and are thankful and praise him, because that's really the only thing you can give him. He has, he has everything else. So I see him heal this guy, and then he hugs this guy, and this guy's crying, and Jesus is all happy and walks away. And then I saw him out, out in the field teaching. All these people gathered around. He started teaching. And God wanted me to see a day in the life of Jesus. This is what, how my son operates. This is how he lives. This is what he does. And I just thought, man, Jesus, you're so cool. I was like, it's 19, 1974, folks. I'm, <laughs> you know. And God wanted to reveal to me who his son was. Jesus is awesome. And then the clouds kind of came in. Next thing I know, I'm walking down Calvary's road again. He, he showed it to me twice, the crucifixion. And then after it went away, I saw Jesus standing there with his white robe on. It had his hand stuck out, and he went like this. And he said, they're just scars. I just saw him get crucified, remember? That was the part. The next thing I know, I see him with his hands out, and he goes, they're just scars. He said, Michael, I love you. I'll tell you something. When God tells you he loves you, it'll mess you up. You think he knows your name? Oh, yeah. He knows all our names. He said, Michael, I love you. He said, tell him I'm coming back. I'm coming soon. Tell him I love him. And then that was it. I'm going to tell you something. How many of you know that would mess you? Some of you are going, man, if I saw that, I'd be undone. Well, what do you think I was? I get up from that vision, and I, my friends are all like, you okay? What's going on? I couldn't even talk to people. All I could say is God is so good, and I would just start bawling. I went out and sat in my dad's pickup truck for like 20 minutes. I came back in, thought I had it together. I walked inside, and I broke down again. I couldn't actually convey that to people for days. But when I did, God used that one vision. I shared it in, in dozens of churches around the county, and every time I'd get shared that vision, I'd give an altar call, and tons of people would get saved. See, people are looking for people that know God, not know of him or know about him. They want to know people that know him. And they want to follow people that actually have a connection with God. Not because they have a, a, a license because they went to some theological seminary. Which most of them today are cemeteries and not seminaries, but that's another story. All right, so that was in 1974. Hey, just a year after I got saved, I'm having these supernatural encounters. He's healing my body. I'm having visions. Wow, this is cool. People are getting saved. I'm popular again. See, I was a ninth grade, a ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade favorite. I was a popular guy in high school. And I got saved. But you know what? In my senior year, I was a Christian. I got I got class favorite. And I was kind of freaked out. I thought, wow, that's kind of strange. And Jesus spoke to me and said, Mike, he said, What'd you think was gonna happen? He said, I don't take people and make freaks out of them. I take freaks and make people out of them. See, when you, get, when you truly meet Jesus, not, not become religious. Religious people turn us all off. 
These are people who walk around judging everybody. You know, that's sin, you know. God hates that. <laughs> well, I'm, I used to do that when I was a loser. You know, those people, oh, thanks. I want to be like you. Now, see, those kind of people are not, doesn't, they don't represent Jesus very well. Hallelujah. Well, what else happened? See, this, all this is proof to me Jesus rose from the dead. Because a dead man can't give you a vision. A dead man can't baptize in the Holy Spirit because he's not around. Jesus said, you'll know I'm in heaven the day I'm with the Father because I'll send you the promise of the Son or the promise of the Spirit. Hallelujah. In 1975, the gifts of the Spirit began to operate in my life. I started asking God. I started reading this book, and I just, excuse me, I didn't know any better than just if you read it, just ask for it. and I'd take that. That looks good. I'd like some of that. You can do that? Yeah. And I started asking God for the gifts. I said, God, any gift you want to give me, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm open. And I started getting words of knowledge. He started telling me things about people's lives that I never knew before. Supernatural things. Detailed, specific things. You ever pray for people and it's vague? May the... May the wind, the wind be at your back. Maybe, maybe you be in heaven for three days before the devil knows you're dead. Uh, yeah, those, students, those cowboy prayers, you know, I was like, what? I started hanging out with this guy that was a prophet, and when he would pray for people, it was, oh, man, it was, he would say that uh, he'd start telling them things about their life real specific, and I'm going, gosh, I don't even want to pray around this guy because I feel like, now I weigh me down to sweep my point. <laughs> I feel like I'm a little kid. And I started saying, Lord, I want to pray so people know they've had in, they, 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 that you know them. And next thing I know, see, I want to tell you something. God wants to give you gifts. See, some of y'all working so hard on your 401k and all this kind of stuff, you're not working on the real stuff that matters. What's in your spiritual arsenal? What, what, what's in your spiritual bank? You can go look at your earthly bank account, and that's, man, most of it's, it's not that impressive. No, I'm, make, I'm making ends meet. Woohoo! What's in your heavenly account? That's the one that you're going to, when they balance the books, that's one that, that's one that doesn't go away. What's in that account? Oh, it's kind of lean. Well, is it that the will of God? Yeah, God says your account will be lean in heaven. That's the only one you can, you're the only one that can do something about that. I'm telling you, since I got saved, I started making deposits. My earthly account, man, my wife, sometimes she's going to the grocery store, got 20 bucks. She goes, pray it stretches. Y'all live like that? Yeah, more than you realize. But you know what? We're, the two, we're some of the two happiest people you meet. I'm going to tell you something. What's in my bank account has no reflection on how, what peace and joy I have in here. Some of y'all couldn't sleep if you didn't have X amount of money in your savings. <laughs> savings? <laughs> Where do you think we got that 20 the other day? <laughs> this is the truth. Oh, oh, that's funny. You only had 20 bucks in your savings? Oh, my gosh. Well, we made our car note, and we had five bucks left over. Hey, payday's coming. I want to tell you something. Living by faith is an adventure. It is. Uh, but you know what? That's another reason I know Jesus rose from the dead. Because I've watched him do things, supernatural things in our life. It's amazing. You know, I never had insurance for th almost 30 years when I lived in California until Obama made me go get insurance. So I went and got insurance. Do you know what? The next month I had open heart surgery. Wow, what a coincidence. No, I don't believe in that. Over $800,000 worth of repair. I feel great, man. That was in 2015. Well, it sure is lucky you got insurance the month before. Luck has nothing. I don't live by luck. You know what? God has always provided for me what I need when I need it. See, he didn't part the Red Sea when the children of Israel left Egypt. <laughs> well, y'all going to be here in about three weeks. So I'm going to part the river. He didn't part it when they left. He, in fact, when they got there, it, was all, it wasn't parted. They're like, ugh. There's an ocean in front of us, mountains on both sides, and here comes the, the Egyptians. Oh, great. Way to go, Mo. 
You know, they all left singing, well, oh, Moses is the man, until they got to the river. And then all of a sudden, they started saying, we had it better in Egypt. What? You were slaves. You have scars on your back from being beat. Yeah, but at least we were safe. Man, I'm going to tell you something. I don't ever look back and miss anything from yesterday. Jesus said, a man puts his hands to the plow and looks back, it's not fit for the kingdom. Those aren't the good old days. Man, those days, thank God we survived them. And thank, It's what's in front of me that I'm excited about. Hallelujah. Well, these gifts of the Spirit, are they, they, they pretty cool? Oh, my goodness, yes. Hallelujah. Um, pretty cool, aren't they? It's my friend Monique. She went through deliverance the other day, and God just read her mail. When, you know, when God reads your mail and you meet somebody, it's, it's, super, it's double, it's twofold. I don't know her, she don't know me. And all of a sudden God is saying, telling her specific things about her life that's making her go, there's no way you could have known that. I didn't tell you that, so how do you know that? Some of you go, well, you're, maybe you're psychic, Brother Mike. See, there's only two sources of power on the earth. One comes from God and one comes from the devil. Okay? Mine aren't from the devil. I'm not psychic. And see, I want to tell you something, psychics only can, they can only know things of the past because they don't know the future. God knows the future. Amen? So she has a supernatural encounter. It's awesome. I see the power of God. I love this stuff. I like seeing people get free. Hallelujah. She went through a whole box of Kleenex. That, that's how I measure them. I, I, go, I go afterwards, whoa, man, this was a, this was a good deliverance. It's a box. Yeah. Hallelujah. Here's the joy is right. All right. So I meet Jesus in 1985 to 2015. God helped me to, helped me to establish six churches in, in different parts of America. I meet Jesus the Apostle. The Apostles start churches. I want to tell you something. I've been to Kentucky, Mississippi, different places. I don't, and, you, and you see God do all these cool things in people's lives. I'm going to tell you, this guy was not an exciting person growing up. I worked at Hall's Appliance for about 10 years. Is that your dad owned a shop? Yes, he owned an appliance repair shop. Fixing washers and dryers, not the most exciting thing. There are some funny stories. I did fix this one wash machine that this person had uh, worked they washed their collard greens in the wash machine and got them, uh, yeah, it's a true story, and it's all plugged up. <laughs> I look in there, well, it's full of grass. Those collard greens. <laughs> you can wash them in the sink. So it's a wonder why your pump and everything's clogged up. It's, anyway, if you had been there, it was a classic moment. Okay, we can fix this. Hallelujah. Just seen some funny stuff growing up, but you see, I want to tell you, some of you guys that think your job defines who you are and you're trying to get value and premium from that, it's not what you do for a living, it's who you are. See, I know I'm a son of God. And I get all my value and premium based on not what I do for other people, but who I am. Whether I'm casting devils out of people or leading people to Jesus or whatever, I'm... I'm you know, there's days in the office it's exciting. There's days it's not a lot going on. But, you know, I'm still the happy guy either way. You don't have to be doing stuff. See, your doing is not necessarily telling you who you are either. Are you at peace when nothing's going on? You got to be. Are you at peace when you're on the, sitting on the same furniture you've been sitting on for years? See, I don't have to have new couches, new this, new that to be happy. Amen. And I grew up with people that had to every so many months get something new to, to fill that big old hole inside them. Stuff don't fill that hole. Amen? Hallelujah. Man, we, now we did get a new bed a few years ago. I'm telling you something. A little wisdom here. You spend a third of your life in bed. Don't go cheap on a mattress. You got a lumpy mattress you can't hardly sleep on. Hey, go get you a decent bed because it makes a difference if you get a good night's sleep. Had our first one 25 years. Yeah, we passed on to our son. He's still, he's, how many of you know God takes care of your stuff when you serve him? Yeah. I'm telling you, I got stuff that just won't break. I raised seven, seven children on the same wash machine for like 15 years. You had a washer last 15 years? 
Same one. That's a miracle. Yeah, it is. God will say, God says he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. In other words, he keeps the devil keeps stays off your stuff. So from 1985 to 2015, I'm helping start six churches throughout different places, parts of America. Go, I'm going on airplanes and I'm traveling. And it's exciting. Meeting Jesus the Apostle. 1990, I learned deliverance. God set me free, delivered me from things that had held me captive for a long time. This is 19, this is 2018. How many years is that? 28 years. I want to tell you something. Thousands of people have been delivered. Amen? It makes a difference. It does, doesn't it, Sherry? She's like, she's like a little bobber. <laughs> it makes a difference, people. Hallelujah. You see, when you command spirits to leave somebody and you have authority to use the name of Jesus and it, and it affects stuff like that, that's the power. Well, that's really cool that you have those kinds of ministries. People, everything I've shared with you is available to every one of you in this room. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name you'll cast out devils. We're going to see a whole lot more manifestation of demonic activity in these last days because how many know the Bible says in the last days they'll call evil good and good evil. Somebody told me the other day that in, in Great Britain um, over uh, 8,000 children have been uh, raped and molested in the last few years. And instead of addressing it and saying that certain people are causing this this was the, this was their idea well, gonna, we're just going to lower the age to 10 for consent people we need people that will stand up and say that's wrong and on my watch that ain't that ain't happening we need some people that have some some gumption and quit just rolling with it and praying come quickly jesus come quickly jesus I don't believe Jesus come back for a dying church. I believe he's come back for a church that's just thumping. Man, look at all the movies been coming out. Samson, hello? I've been waiting for that movie for decades. They're making a sequel to The Passion of Christ. Well, that's going to be awesome. You know, when he died, it was cool, but when he rose, that's when things started happening. What are we celebrating today? He rose. We didn't celebrate Friday. We're celebrating today. I want to tell you something. Jesus has proven to me over and over, even this morning, he was talking to me. I said, hey, Mike, he calls you by name? Yeah. I said, hey, Mike, tell him who I am to you. Remember the question is, who do men say that he is? And Jesus says, who do you say I am? See, everybody in this room got to answer that question one day. Some of you already have. You already know who he is. He's the Messiah. He's the son of the living God. Well, he's one of seven ascended masters. No, he is the master. There's only one that's ascended. You know, when I cast devils out of people, there's only one name that gets any result. I don't ever say, in the name of Buddha, nothing happens. There's only one name, the Bible says, given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. When he was hanging on that cross and he died, right before he gave up the ghost, he said, it is finished. And I want to tell you something, it's finished. This whole crucifixion, death, burial, resurrection, it's a complete work. It'll cover every need you got. It's given me friends. It's given me healing. It's given me co every confidence. It's given me everything that the world took from me. It gave it back in fistfuls. It's given me a beautiful wife that works with me, not against me. Been there, done that. <laughs> Are we on the same team? Oh. How much are you glad you got a wife that pulls with you, not against you? Been there, done that. Hallelujah. So... Who is Jesus to you? Well, I'm learning about him. I think he's pretty cool. Well, he is. But who is he to you? 
I talked to somebody recently that had a problem with the word sin because they, they had it as a negative connotation. They said, I just don't like, because I don't like to say sin or whatever and stuff like that. Uh, I like to be everything positive and stuff. But the reality is we've, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When I was out in the woods, nobody, no preacher was sitting from a pulpit telling me what I had done wrong. How many of y'all live with you 24-7? Do you live with you most of the time? Or, you know, I'm with me all the time. See, the reason you've got to have peace with yourself because you stuck with you. If you don't like you, you're in bad company. When Bryn's not around, it's just me. I'm okay. If some of y'all in this, there's some of you in this room that you need people around you always trying to encourage you and build you up because when left to yourself, you don't feel that sparky. You, don't, you always hear voices saying, you're not, you're not, you're not. Man, I'm going to tell you something. There's, I know someone that can shut that voice up completely where you can hear that song we sing. There's no mountain he won't climb up, no wall he won't kick down, no lie he won't tear down coming after me. Man, he pursues me. He pursues me. When I woke up this morning, he was ready to talk to me. He didn't say, go in there and get your Bible and beat the sheep today. Make them feel like homemade sin. Oh, that's not who he is. He, don't like, he doesn't need to put you down to make him feel better. Amen? Some of y'all used to go to church, and when you left, if you felt really so unworthy you felt like it was a good service man i just feel like homemade sin on a popsicle stick i just feel horrible and, you know a good service though i feel like god can't even stand me to look at me i when 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 i'm so glad he showed me who he was because religion has a way of trying to tell people who he is but they're not even close he loves us he pursues us yeah but brother mike you don't know what all i've done <laughs> We're not doing that contest. If I ever hear you guys sitting around talking about how bad you've been, I will come up to you and say, you need to change the subject. Because the Bible says it's a, it's a shame to speak of things done in darkness. We don't, that doesn't mean God loves you more because you were in gr worse darkness. Thank God we've been delivered and set free of all that. Amen? The greatest testimony in this church will not be thus... Us who, who used to do stupid things and been forgiven. Hopefully it's our kids that we trained up that miss all that. That they don't do stupid things. I've got kids that, that didn't ever do drugs. I've got kids that are married that are staying married. Sean just celebrated 15 years. I believe, I believe that him and Beth are going to, you know, if Jesus tarries... In another 15 years, they'll be married 30. And see, I don't see them splitting up. Because they grew up seeing, seeing a couple, well, they, second time around. <laughs> How, even the mistakes that we've made, if we've learned from them, we don't have to repeat them. Hallelujah. Well, God is so good. He loves every one of us. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. See, I believe God drew everybody here for a reason today, not just to go to the park and have ham and watch kids chase eggs and all kind of stuff. All that's fun. Watch Sean cry on the sidelines because he can't play volleyball. That's exciting. But he brought us here so he could, you could hear this message and you go, well, it sure, it sure, it sure is lucky, Mike, that the Lord showed you all those cool things. Luck has nothing to do with it. I want to tell you something. What he'll do for me, he'll do for you. You want, to, you want God to reveal himself to you personally and show you things? Ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. I just ask these things. I ask for this stuff. I ask for gifts. I just told you a minute ago, my birthday's Tuesday. She has a list. I'm asking for gifts today, people. <laughs> Naturals and spirituals. I like to do both. But see, God is good. I want you not to just live a, a, a survival life. I want you to live an exciting life. I don't want you to be a survivor. I want you to be a thriver. And I'm not making plugs for Kaiser right now. I'm just, that's their thing. We're thriving. <laughs> After time I go to the doctor, how you doing? Thriving. Just thriving. They wear the little jackets. It's funny. I say, Brother Mike, are you like this all the time? Ask her. She thinks sometimes I'm out to embarrass her. This is who I am. 
I try to encourage people, make people laugh. How many of y'all like laughter? I hate it. I hate, my, I hate when I laugh. I hate it. I like to be, I like to be serious. Especially about God. How many people you led to the Lord? None yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Newsflash. Turn that frown upside down. Make it something people want. Hallelujah. Okay, bow your heads just for a minute. Just bow your heads, close your eyes, and respect for people around you. I'm going to ask you the same question Jesus asked his disciples. I'm going to ask you today. Who do men say that Jesus is? Some think he's a prophet. Some think he's one of the, one of the prophets or whatever and stuff, John the Baptist, whatever. But then Jesus said, who do you say I am? Who is Jesus to you? Flesh and blood can't reveal this to you. I can't share. I shared my testimony and my story to inspire and hopefully challenge you to want more. But only God can open spiritual eyes. But see, the good, the good thing is right now, right now, the Holy Spirit's doing his job. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict people. See, I quit years ago trying to convict, trying to make people feel bad. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. And I'm just asking you, I came to Jesus June 15, 1973. Why? Because I was tired of living a life that just wasn't very fulfilling. I got tired of hurting people that I love. I got tired of not having any power to say no. I just got tired. And I asked Jesus to come in my life and make my life worth living. And I want to tell you something. He's done that. So, 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 there's no words to describe how he's fulfilled that prayer. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. If you're here today and you feel that, you feel that tugging, you feel the Holy Spirit saying, he's talking about you. <laughs> Are you tired of just existing? You want, do you want to, to do more than exist? you want to live? You were created. The Bible says all things were created by God. For his own pleasure they are and were created. You were created to know God, to praise God, to love God, to give God glory. For his pleasure you were created. If you're not living a life that's pleasing to God, you're not fulfilling your function. I'm telling you this morning, if you want to fulfill your function in life, no, God, you were, God created mankind so he could have sons and daughters. He wants a family, people. It's not a religion I'm asking you to join. I'm asking you to join a family. God is our father. And every born-again person in this room is my, son, is, my, our, our, is my sister and my brother. We've joined the same family. God is our father. That's what God wants. He doesn't want a, he doesn't want a group of people that are religious. He wants a family. He wants sons and daughters. So if the Holy Spirit's convicting you right now, this thing, why don't you give your heart to Jesus? I'm talking about give your heart to him, not just your mind. Give your heart to him. The Bible says with a heart a man believes. You know, this stuff doesn't even make sense to the carnal mind. It doesn't make sense that you can sit under a tree and ask God to come in your life and it changed your life. That don't even make sense. It doesn't make sense that you can pray and ask God to heal ulcers and go to the doctor a few weeks later and see that they're all gone and that you can eat whatever. That don't even make sense to the brain. But with the heart, a man believes. You know what's so cool right now? God is giving some of you in this room right now. I don't know if I have enough faith. Yeah, you do. He's giving it to you right now. The Bible says, for, gra for by grace were you saved. And that not of yourself, it's a gift from God. God's giving you the faith right now to believe what I'm telling you is the truth. See, I believe some of y'all are going, dude, that's so cool that, that all those cool things happened to that guy. See, I believe that, you're belie that you believe it's true. God gave you the faith to believe that this morning. And he's giving you the faith right now to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died and rose again and ascended into heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he's coming back soon. That's my good news. Hey, the world's not coming to an end. It's coming to an end of an age. 
There is a new age coming, but it's not the new age movement. It's a new age because Jesus himself is coming back to this earth and going to establish his kingdom. And you talk about uh, living happily ever after, it's on its way. But he said before he came back, this would ha- and everything that's happening in the news right now is happening, and it's in Scripture. I can show it to you. Well, it sure is cool that God knew that 2,000 years ago. Well, yeah, because he's God. But how many of y'all just want more love? Because that's who he is. If you want to accept Jesus this morning, give your heart to God, God will fill it with his love, and you will have a supernatural ability to love other people like you've never thought before. I'm so, that's what I love about Jesus. I'm, I'm thankful he forgave my sin. Oh, absolutely. But more than, he didn't, he didn't just leave me there. He filled me with his spirit and gave me an ability to love like he loves. How many of y'all are tired of running out of love? That's because you got a carnal love. Get a, get a divine love. Get, get a love from heaven that's new every morning. Every morning, the love of God's renewed for you and me. We get a do-over every day. That's awesome. So I'm asking right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you, how many of y'all want to make peace with God today? You just ready to give your heart to the Lord. I see that hand, sister. I knew that was going to happen today. I see that hand up in the balcony. God bless you. Come on, there's a few others. God's dealing with you, saying, it's time to make peace with me. No pressure. No pressure. Just come into a place of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you don't know, Brother Mike, I've done too many bad things. No, you haven't. I think I've committed the unpardonable sin. You wouldn't be here if you'd done that. God is not through with you by no means. You know, we do this by faith. We, we pray to a God we can't see, can't even hear. But once you reach out by faith, then he reveals himself to you. That's what's so cool about God. You that raised your hand, I want you to do something real simple. I want you to stand to your feet. You don't have to come down here. Just stand where you are. I want you to, I want you to stand up for Jesus. There. All right. God bless you. All right. I want you to, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just repeat after me. There's, there's some others that need to be standing, but I want to tell you something. I'm on your side. You can pray this prayer where you're sitting, and God will hear it and, and come into your life and change you. But you standing, I want you to pray this prayer. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I receive Jesus Christ into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior all the days of my life. From this day forward, I'm living for you. Because you died for me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus name. Amen. All right. You can be seated. You want to tell you what happened? All the angels in heaven, the Bible says, just did the wave. Millions upon millions, if not billions of angels. The Bible says all the angels in heaven rejoice when one comes home. So you, Monique, you made a difference. Little Lucy, you're causing a ruckus in the balcony. Mama's up there crying. Woo, see, the angels in heaven are already getting freaked out. Isn't God good? He's good, isn't he? I love you, Lee. <laughs> I'm just back here, just minding my own business, brother Mike. Hallelujah. Oh, he's so good. Lord told me you was getting saved today. Hallelujah. Man, he, he did some cool things for you the other day. This is just the beginning. It just gets better. Well, guys, it is 1156. We're going to be dismissed. And then y'all welcome to go to the park and have food with us. It's just right down the road, about three or four blocks. That would be awesome if y'all could stay. But um, uh, if you can't, I understand. Uh, isn't God good? I'm so glad that, Bill, you and, you and the family came today. Y'all come over to the park with us if you don't have plans. I know it's Easter. You might have other plans, but they got lots of food and 
just need to rejoice. So glad you two came today. You got beautiful kids. Hallelujah. They are some good looking kids. You better. I would put leashes on those. I know I see people at Disneyland with little leashes and go, what's that for? You don't want nobody taking them babies. Those are beautiful. Hallelujah. Mine, I let them, I just let them run, go. We'll meet back here. If we meet with you, it's great. <laughs> They're all still here. Aren't y'all glad Jesus has saved folks this morning? Thank God for a wonderful day of fellowship. Love every one of y'all. We'll see y'all in an hour over at the park. Or you can head over there now if you want, and we'll just have a great day of fellowship. All right, you're dismissed in Jesus' name.